So welcome to the session. Hope your preparation for NET paper one is going good. Uh, I definitely want to remind you that the expected questions classes that we have covered recently are extremely important. Few of those are available here. The remaining on doorstep. Uh, so just go through all the topics that we have mentioned under expected questions. Extremely important for paper one this time. Specifically those hailing to higher education that we have covered. The next thing is uh, we are live today with the topic of. Uh, logic specifically pertaining to Indian logic where most of the students find it difficult to score good marks uh, but it is extremely scoring simple basic concepts that you have to understand for uh, Indian logic and tomorrow's session we would have on higher education at 5 p.m. again so to begin with the first question here is which of the following is inference for oneself now what is Anuman uh, we have covered in our lectures before and uh, this question talks about inference now Anuman is where we talk about inference but this question focuses on inference about oneself so what do you think is the correct option mention that in the comment section and uh, once we have the responses in the comment section we will proceed further so uh, the most important thing that you must remember here is there are two types of Anuman the first is the Swatha Anuman and the next is the Parth Anuman which is uh, the Swata which is the self and the Parth which is the others right so A choice A talks about inference about oneself and choice D which is the Prathar Anuman which is for others talks about the inference for others so here we have option A choice A as the right answer let's move on to the next question here so the next question that we have taken here is another question from the section on logic and this question is a very basic question testimony is regarded as now um, in our very fundamental concepts of Indian logic we have talked about all the six pillars and there we had talked about testimony as one of the major pillars now I'll help you recall the word verbal testimony which is known as Shabd now since I have mentioned that this question talks about verbal testimony or Shabd let me know which of the following is the correct answer here so you have four of the choices now this talks about the uh, the commitment that you are taking let's say you are the king and your voice is heard by the masses so what you say is believed by the masses as as it is so it is the shabd or the verbal testimony and this is regarded as personal religious impersonal or rational which of the following would be the correct answer here so the correct answer here would be i am looking for the answers in the comment section right so right the correct answer here would be personal because it is relating to uh, relating to the people and getting a direct connection with the people right so that is the correct answer for this question now let me jump to the next question this question talks about the classification based on the psychology of inference now psychology of inference the first question that we did now if you remember what we did in the first question you would be automatically able to answer this question and this is an extremely important question again a question based on Anuman so the two ways under which Anuman is classified is what is asked in the question so what do you think would be the correct answer among the given choices so among the given choices here the correct answer would be the two types of Anuman those are the Swatha Anuman and the Partha Anuman the Swatha Anuman talks about the uh, self okay uh, inference for oneself and Partha Anuman talks about the inference for others so one and two are the right answer so let's check the answer and looks great so this is the right answer for the question on Anuman let me jump to the next question now this is a syllogism question now syllogism we have discussed previously in a separate set uh, as 
uh, the lectures have followed uh, if you have been following the lectures or if you have covered all the lectures on door step that we have taken for paper 1 carefully you would understand how do we uh, actually come up to the validity of it so when i say all men are mortal and all kings are men so even if there is one king that king would be man right and then i am saying that all kings are men so all the kings would be within men and all men are mortal right so let me just quickly bring in the pen here and i'll draw the syllogism diagram for you so let me just have it okay so i'll draw the three circles right so this is men mortal and king right all men are mortal that means even if there is one man that has to be mortal so there can be no man that can exist in this region clear the next is all kings are men so all king have to be men there cannot be any king who is not man so king cannot be outside this region now i say all king are mortal that's correct because king if any can be present only in this region right so only in the solid region can we have the king and that's where guru has the right answer great so here the syllogism is what the syllogism is actually a valid form of syllogism i hope you understand it clearly so the idea here is if the middle term is distributed and how the middle term is distributed is important to take into account and once you have that knowledge so uh, we can understand when the middle term is distributed and the syllogism is valid there is no fallacy of undistributed items that exist right i have another question my next question here is sound reasoning in an argument means what is a sound reasoning i have four of the options here you have to pick up which of the following is a correct option i am waiting for the correct response in the comment section now this is again a very very important question whether the validity is sound or whether the syllogism or the argument is sound or not is to be identified right now when i am saying argument is sound when it can be sound when i am saying the argument is valid right great so chandra ankita a lot of you with correct answers so when the syllogism is valid that means there are no fallacies that exist and since there are no fallacies it is a sound reasoning because it is effective and accurate in nature all of you chandra ankita guru great going the answer is correct here that when there is a sound reasoning that implies that syllogism is valid with no fallacy that exists that means there is an accurate and a correct reasoning that exists right now uh, let me jump to another question so there are nearly 900 questions for you to practice within the indian logic itself so if you are able to practice all these questions definitely you are all set with the uh, questions on syllogism and definitely those who are answering the questions correctly today just drop in uh, a email to admin at examrace.com to get a special discount coupon if you want uh, for subscriptions now uh, the next question is in which of the following argument conclusion can be no more than probable so this is a very interesting question i am saying the conclusion is only probable it may happen so there is just a probability now which of the following is correct do we call it as deductive implicative demonstrative or analogical i am waiting for the correct answers in the comment section before i proceed now i just give you a hint when i am saying there is a probability probably i am comparing one thing to another if i say you are quiet as a mouse so what i am doing is i am comparing you uh, not exactly you but yes i am comparing a person to a mouse that that person is as quiet as a mouse that means 
there is a analogy that exists and therefore the argument which is utilized in this case is an analogical argument where the conclusion can be no more than a probable conclusion which exists niharika great going so correct answer here uh, let's move to the next question that we have for today and that question is okay sorry okay so the next question is agam are the early prakrit text of very basic question very fundamental question uh, now this question i'm looking for a quick answer which philosophy actually talks about agam as a text now prakrit if you know which philosophy used prakrit as a common language then again you can answer this question so a simple question looking for the answers i'll just wait for a few more seconds before i move forward i'm looking for the correct answers for this question okay so agam are the prakrit text and prakrit is the language of jaina philosophy so jain philosophy becomes the right answer so a is your right option here and if you want to go into the concept it is the gandhara and the sutra kevalya where agam is mentioned in the early prakrit text so that's the correct answer for this question let's move to the next question now we have to match the correct fallacies very very important question in which case it would be viruddha sat pratipaksh and badhata uh, we have talked about all these fallacies in detail in our lectures with extremely important examples which are commonly asked so if you have gone through that carefully i believe this becomes very very simple even with the name you can identify viruddha means opposite contradictory so i have already told you the answer here probably for one of the options but yes still looking for the correct option in viruddha you are contradicting then you have sat pratipaksh and badhata right uh, i'll uh, jot down the examples for each of those now viruddha is where there is contradiction because of middle term right so a goes with 2 now here i give you an example sound is eternal because sound is produced so i am contradicting at one point i am saying eternal at the other point i am saying it is produced so both together cannot be correct and therefore it is a fallacy so what kind of fallacy it is it is a viruddha fallacy and it is contradicting the middle term so when i am saying sound is eternal and sound is produced it is viruddha the next is sat pratipaksh sat pratipaksh occurs when middle term is contradicting another middle term for example i say sound is eternal because sound is audible now when i am saying uh, chandra questions on higher education will do tomorrow at 5 pm again so join in tomorrow at 5 pm for questions on higher education so sat pratipaksh as i said is sound is eternal because it is audible so there is a middle term contradicting another middle term and therefore this is an example of sat pratipaksh and what is badhata badhata occurs when the middle term is contradicted by some other uh, by some other uh, inference for example i take a very simple example i say ice is hot because it is a substance now when i say ice is hot it is again itself a contradictory and then i say ice is a substance so it is definitely contradicted by some other inference that i am trying to explain and therefore it is badhata so it occurs when the middle term is contradicted by some other praman that exists so for a the correct option is 2 for b the correct option is 1 and for c the correct option is Three. I hope uh, that makes it clear. Let's jump on to the next question. This is a question which talks about anubhav. Now, anubhav is part of which of the following praman? What is anubhav? Experience. And how do you experience? Experience is something which is attained through your sense organs. 
now i have the answer already so which do you think would be the right option a uh, very very direct question so niharika gets it right so pratyaksh is the right option because pratyaksh is where we take into account the sense organs and anubhav is the the feel that we get through the senses and therefore anubhav is a part of uh, the pratyaksh okay so if i check my answer here that's correct and if we go on to the five senses it is the sight which is chakshu touch which is tatva hearing which is sutra taste which is ras and smell which is grahan so these are the five senses that we take into account right so uh, ankita niharika uh, all of you correct going let's move to the last question for today the question says indian logic deals with which of the following now this is again a very direct question uh, indian logic has talked about not just one concept if you remember what is inductive and deductive to simply summarize i would let you know isd inductive is specific to general and deductive is general to specific that means from a specific thing i derive a general statement so niharika ankita have the right answer great going uh, the idea is indian logic deals with both inductive as well as deductive logic so it can be from general to specific or specific to general does not matter guru has the right answer again and that is the basis because uh, the idea here is nyay philosophy talks about the concepts of inductive as well as deductive on the other hand it rejects the idea of verbal uh, verbal views or verbal testimonies and therefore uh, this is the basis to understand the indian logic so this was the session that we had discussed for today i hope you enjoyed the session keep preparing well for your paper 1 tomorrow would be another live session we will be meeting at 5 pm with a topic on higher education so don't miss it wish you very good luck for your preparation and if you have any questions you are free to connect to me directly at any point of time to my email manishika.jain@mindspreadsolutions.com i'll be more than happy to attend your queries wish you very good luck have a wonderful day ahead